Jessica. Well, welcome back, fans, to the Billings Outlaws. As they return to First Interstate Arena, <clears throat> excuse me, they've been gone for like a month. Jay Cohn, along with Rick Holmes tonight, as we bring you more uh, CIF football here from inside the Good Metro Park evening. Arena. Rick, nice to have you back. And we're trying to uh, figure out there's so many changes in the league, uh, lots of storylines to talk about tonight. Number one, the Outlaws head coach Brian Schmidt on a medical leave, so Theo Johnson's the interim head coach, and you had a chance to uh, kind of talk to some players about how they're feeling about Theo has been with the team, played for the Outlaws back in the day, but uh, now he's the man step in while Brian's on the shelf. Yeah, and Theo's got an extra fan here, his mother, uh, Cynthia, and so she's praying for them. The grandkids were out there. It was kind of fun watching them with Theo, but the team looks like they're responding well. Theo actually got to call the plays last week against uh, Salina in the, the loss. So he had uh, some uh, baptism under fire, and he got to go against his old boss, Ron O'Neill, uh, who he played for, and he was also defensive coordinator for for the last couple of seasons. And th he gave uh, Haran the ultimate compliment after the game, saying he outcoached me. He made the adjustments in the second half that I didn't. Uh, and you don't know that, but the first half, it, looked, it was a tale of two halves last week for the Outlaws. Absolutely. Also, the big storyline tonight uh, for the Outlaws, their first home game in a month. And, you know, I'm looking around. The fans are here, but we could have more fans. I think they forgot they were on a roll when they left. They've won two out of their last three. But, you know, there's lots of things going on. The weather's getting nice. So the Outlaws are back. First time in a month in this building. You know how long it's been? I've had heart surgery since they were here <laughs> last time. <laughs> but uh, they, they all <clears throat> were so excited uh, to be here and uh, be back in, in, in buildings in there. Judging from warm-ups, and you don't always tell, but they're ready to play. They're doing the coin toss right now. Just turn around here and let's take a look, Rick. As we can see, uh, the coin is in the air. And where it stops, we'll find out. Rapid City has declined. They'll kick this way. If you right. notice, Dylan Donahue's in number 49 tonight instead of 56. He's unmistakable no matter what number he wears. <laughs> Another big storyline, Rick, is uh, the Outlaws are missing two of their best defenders. Denarius Antoine, the linebacker who leads the team at tackles. And Devontae Brown, the strong safety. Denarius is getting married this weekend in, tax in Texas, and Devontae is his best man. So they're both gone with the blessings of the team. But uh, those are some big shoes to fill. Yeah, and it's, and it's innocent on their part because there was a buy schedule for this weekend when they planned the wedding, and then, of course, the schedule got changed. So now we have a game, and they're gone. But the good news is Jeff Luke's going to be in the middle. Billy's going to be in the secondary at free safety. I don't think they're going to lose a step. We'll find out how deep the Outlaws' uh, bench is. They're going to have their chance to shine here tonight. So we're just moments away. As the prelims are just getting underway, let's take our seats and take a look at how this kickoff to start the game between the Billings Outlaws and the Rapid City Marshals. So the Outlaws will be receiving the opening kickoff here from uh, Rapid City, and that's a story in itself. Rick, they have uh, uh, Melissa, uh, the female kicker, only one in the league that we're aware of. Melissa Struther. They've had some problems in the kicking game covering kicks. They had and a two. big return underway. Oh, they're going to rule that it was out of bounds. But, uh, boy, that was close to a big game for the Outlaws right off the bat. That was the problem. It was uh, Winston Rapid Green. City, Rapid City last week. Ran, got two run back on them for TDs. So the games last night featured uh, Sioux City against the Southwest Kansas Storm, and Sioux City 
won at easily, 60-something to 14, and that puts them at 7-0 and on the season. The other game last night, Omaha takes down Salina 14-11, to and that takes uh, Salina to a record of 4-3. and The Outlaws start this game with a record of 4-2, and while Rapid City comes in with a record of 1-5. and So that pretty much uh, tells the story. The Outlaws trying to get back on the winning track after dropping their last game against uh, Salina last weekend. Charles McCollum, your quarterback, and they'll put the ball in play right at the 15-yard line. Receiver's in motion, and it's a running play to start right off the bat, up to the 23, up to the 25-yard line. New, uh, one of the new additions, number 21. Eddie Hamilton, I believe. I think Eddie's a deep player. Um, well, he might be one of the uh, new running backs that they picked up. Chad Nolan or Troy Evans, we'll have to see which one's wearing number 21. It's Troy Evans, I've been told. 21 is Troy Evans, so. One of the new signees this week. McCollum again to Evans off left tackle, breaks a tackle and fights for short yardage down near the 22 yard line. Antoine Smith uh, in on the defense for Rapid City and you're gonna see a lot of Antoine. He's from Dickinson State, one of the, one of the Blue Hawks. Uh, and uh, he, made, he made several critical plays last week. He's, he's a very, very intelligent defensive back. All right, second down and about six yards to go. Ball resting at the 21-yard line. As McCollum brings the uh, crew up to the line of scrimmage. They're trying to cash in this opening possession against the Marshals. McCollum checks the defense. Throws it over the head, intended for Laughing House down at the 10-yard line. It was a slow developing play, and the defense uh, looked like they pretty much had it smelled out. Good coverage, uh, and, and uh, of course, uh, O-line, great pass blockers uh, for the Outlaws. They've been playing well uh, all season long together. So if you're just joining us, Theo Johnson, the interim head coach for the Outlaws, as Brian Schmidt is on a medical leave. McCollum's going to have to run this up the middle and takes a hit from behind, but gets inside the 15-yard line. You know, you got to give McCollum credit. He doesn't run a lot, but when he does, he picks his spots and he stays healthy. <laughs> That's the big key. You want to stay healthy. This is a league where they only, they only count those who can play and continue to play. McCollum has his crew inside the 15-yard line of the Marshals down to the 13. As he scans the field wide open. It looks like Evans now inside the three. The new addition making uh, uh, making a big impact already early. Anthony Jackson and Richard Ramirez, uh, along with uh, Jordan Mosley, I think are gonna uh, gonna do well tonight. Actually, Ramirez looks like he's out. Outlaws going quickly as McCollum sends his receivers in motion. They give to Evans again. Off right tackle down to the three-yard line. And that'll bring up second and goal. We're going to call uh, Dickinson State uh, the Blue Hawks uh, names twice. John De Palma, defensive back 5'11", 195 in on the tackle. So McCollum gets a better look at what Rapid City is going to deploy defensively inside the red zone. There go the receivers. McCollum looking quickly. Wanted to throw it to Gary Brown. Now he's going to pitch it to Evans, and he crosses the goal line for the score. And I think that's the play they had drawn up to begin with, but whatever works. How, uh, how heady is Charles McCollum? Gary Brown was sent one of the, one of the flyers. But he was, wasn't a receiver. He was sent in to block. Troy Evans, one of the new uh, signees for the Outlaws. Luke Daly in to add the extra point. Let's see how this goes. It's always a, always a crapshoot. Snap is down. The kick is wide. 
So six to nothing, the early score. The Outlaws take the opening kickoff and march right down the field. A quick running play to uh, Troy Evans Jr. Gets the Outlaws on the board. It's six nothing, 10-14 left here in the opening period. So we'll get a chance to see how Rapid City sizes up on offense. And Rick, the question mark is at quarterback for Rapid City. You know, that's really the storyline of the night uh, tonight. I couldn't get the coaches pregame to tell me who was going to start. But they've been through four quarter quarterbacks that I know of and maybe a fifth. Demetrius Davis, a D-back, filled in at quarterback last week. So really all they had could is, is use his legs to run. So they had an option. They had a draw. They, they tried to do things outside. Didn't do it well. They've got some kicking problems. So you can't be one-dimensional in this league like they are. So I'm anxious to see who they are going to start. Well, Daly's going to kick off from the goal line. And he has one rouge where he kicked it through the uprights. That was a month ago here in Metra. So we'll see if maybe he's going to try that again. The kicking game, if you're just joining us in the uh, CIF, is an interesting uh, twist to this game. Daly kicks the squib kick, and it's fielded right at the seven-yard line. And the Outlaws have a team tackle as he gets over the 15 down to right at the 15-yard line. I'm going to guess as big as that was that it might have been Janae's. Uh, Jason Tillery, he is just a load. Six feet, 200, but you said you were down on the field, and it's 200 plus. And I'm then 200 some. plus, and he's as big as I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see who's calling the signals. It's going to be number 15. So we're going to have to check rosters and see who they slipped into the Jake number Johnson. It is Jake. Yep. That yeah. is one interesting story, Mr. Johnson. Uh, that running play goes nowhere. Dylan Donahue in on the stop. Dylan Donahue and uh, Eddie Hamilton. They released uh, released Jabari uh, uh, Henderson and uh, brought in Eddie Hamilton. Looks good. Jeff Luck in the middle now, of course, replacing uh, Antoine. So Johnson, the quarterback, surveys the situation, throws it deep, wide open, and then some tackle there made by Roderick Jarrett. But the pass was complete down to the 15, so the Marshals have it uh, just well into Outlaws territory. Both teams in the opening going, kind of feeling each other out. Who's 11? Z Robertson, Roberson. Penalty flag flies. Pass was incomplete. Intended for Connor Olson, the running back out of the backfield. Roberson is a talented athlete. When they needed yardage last week, uh, he was kind of a go-to go -to player, but Lakeem Christmas has all the talent in the world, too. So the penalty against the Outlaws, one of the defenders was not lined up within the line of scrimmage, as is required, so five-yard penalty takes the ball almost to the tents, resting right on the Rapid City side of the 10-yard line. Rapid City trying to answer the opening score by the Outlaws. Eight minutes, 15 seconds to go. Cross over the middle. It's intercepted by the Outlaws, number five. Jeff down, Luck. Jeff Luck in that new linebacker position. Thank you very much. You throw it right to him. Antoine might not get his job back. <laughs> you know, uh, Jake Johnson's going to have to... to uh, get a little more help on up front. He's 6'1", 220, played at Adams State, but he has one heck of a story. A great talent. Uh, he was told uh, to get, get a little more uh, experience, so they sent him to the Czech Republic to uh, play, and he beat a two-time defending champ team over there. He was highly recruited. He eventually went to CSU Pueblo, broke his wrist, and, of course, didn't get back to Adams State and now into the CIF. 
Rapid City with uh, one of their players. Number 44, Ralph Turner, shaken up on that play. And he's slowly making his way to the, uh, to the bench. Turner, very short, but thick. He, he is, and he, he, uh, he uses his leverage so good. He's a little shorter than some of the D linemen he plays against. I watched him for about three hours this morning. And uh, he's very good technically. But you're right, he's a little undersized. And the Lady Outlaws handing out some free merchandise here for the fans as they continue to file into the Metro Park. As we mentioned, this is the first home game in a month for the Outlaws after three consecutive road contests. They won two and one in that difficult part of their schedule. They would have loved to have gone 3-0, and oh, but that second half against Salina kind of bit them, came up and bit them at the very end. So we'll see. But right now their defense has answered Rapid City's initial drive. And Jeff, Jeff Luck with the interception, and he returned it to the 20-yard line. And that's where the outlaws will put it in play first and 10. A lot of people in Montana ought to be familiar with Troy Evans. He's from Marshall University. He's only 5'9", 205, but you can see he's quick. But Montana very familiar with Marshall. So Theo Johnson, the new interim coach for the outlaws. He actually called the plays last week, and he's been with the team. He's an assistant coach up at Billings Skyview High School and has had many years in uh, coaching both in the high school level and indoor football. So Charles McCollum sends his receivers in motion, and the give is to Evans. Across the 20, 25, across midfield. A couple of spin moves inside the 10. Another move, and across the goal line. What a run. The moves by Troy Evans Jr. Oh my gosh, those are like three twist moves and a, a stiff arm and some good blocking along the way. And Talk. the Outlaws immediately cash in. You know there's a fine line from good to great. If that was Tyrese Thomas, number 23, who led him into the end zone, that was a spectacular block. Great, great individual effort there by Evans. And some backhand springs to boot at the end. He's showing off his <clears throat> athletic uh, talent right there. LeBaron Mallory, the D-back uh, for Rapid City, uh, got taken out of the play handily. Jamario Benson is the holder. Daly with the kick. No good. So Daly 0 for 2 in the extra point department early on. He's going to have to get used to the turf and the inside uh, feel here at the Rimrock Auto Arena. But with 6.27 left to go, the Outlaws have taken their two first possessions. One uh, big drive on the opening possession. The second an intercept, shut up by an interception by Jeff Luck and just took him one play. And new running back Troy Evans showed... Why they are uh, why they brought him in? He's got some quick feet and some moves. All he needed was one or two good blocks, but that was mostly an individual effort. You know, I thought uh, Shannon Warren was an adequate back. <laughs> I think this looks like a good trade. <laughs> There's a shot of the crowd here at uh, the Rimac Auto Arena. They continue to file in, and the the good seats are right down next to the. Uh, next to the field in those suites next to the boards. But as we've mentioned, you have to be heads up there. You can get a football or a couple of players in your lap if you're not watching. In all fairness, uh, Rapid City's missing one of their better linemen, if not the better lineman, Brandon Grady tonight. But they've got a huge man in his place, Justin Calder in his 6'5 and 350. Daly with the kick and is taken at the 15 and down at the 25. So they're gonna have, Rapid City will have the ball Right at midfield. Number 10 was the running back there. Looks like Devontae Tinsley picked up the uh, kick. You can see right off the bat that that squib kick on this turf, it, you just don't know what it's going to do. Bounce right, left, straight up in the air. And it is a big uh, factor 
throughout the game. Yeah, well, Daly's kind of got the hang of that. It takes a while to get used to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's quarterback Jake Johnson again. First possession didn't end up great, but let's see how Rapid City can retaliate. Throws across the middle. Oh, and he's got his receiver. Uh, I'll tell you what, that uh, th that receiver, he makes plays like that all day long. Z, Z Robertson. He's from uh, University of Albany. Can you tell me what their mascot is? No. They are the Great Danes. Oh, I love it. I love it. And another uh, penalty against the Outlaws. And that'll put Rapid City in business down at the 10 yard line. They look like a different team already than the three hours I watched this morning with uh, with Johnson at quarterback. The pass over the middle has proved to be both. Oh, and the snap gets past Robertson. And he's throws as he's clotheslined. And he's uh, holding his head. That, that was dangerous. The, the snap got past Johnson. He turned around and ran back inside the 20, picked it up, and took a, all he could just to get rid of it right as the outlaw defender came in and hit him right about chest level. I'm guessing uh, with Grady out, they've moved uh, – they moved the lineman around a little bit. Somebody else is playing center now that Calderon's in there. Looks like Calderon might even be in the middle. Instead of a tackle, he may have been the center. So that penalty flag went against the Outlaws and sets up Rapid City right at the five yard line. That's Calderon at center. That's these new jitters. Understandable. Right. Johnson calls for the snap. Looks over the middle now. Oh, and that's knocked down by Jeff Luck again. Got a big hand out there and knocked it out. Johnson was trying to throw it a little across the middle to the right. And Luck said, not in my area. Sorry. I couldn't see the end zone, so I'm not sure who his receiver was. But Luck's having a great game so far. You know, he's a guy with his hand in the dirt or in the grass, I guess, or on the turf. <laughs> and now he's a stand-up, whole different position and playing it well. Second down now and goal to go. Ball right outside the five-yard line. The Rapid City Marshals trying to answer two scores by the Outlaws. And Jake Johnson will cross the goal line on a 10-yard scamper. Nobody open, take off, tuck it in, and touchdown and for the Marshals. And the big guys up front did exactly what they should to do. Calderon and Shea Roberts got outstanding blocks up there at the line of scrimmage. So with four, four minutes and 12 seconds to go here in the first quarter, the Marshals have tacked on six points. And it's 12 to six. We'll see how they do in the extra point department. Melissa Strother is the kicker. All of 5-1 one, and 130. I'm going to take a wild guess and say she's the only female kicker in the CIF. I haven't seen it or heard another one. Rich gives me the heads up on that. So we'll see if she can find the upright. Split the uprights. They're 10 yards apart, suspended from the ceiling. Bad snap, but the snapper got the hold down. Good job there. It was a high snap. Kevin Chisholm, Chrism showed his good hands. Hauled in that high snap and was able to get it down. So Melissa Strother split the upright. That brings the Marshals within 12 to seven with 3.38 left here in the first quarter. Well, fans, you're gonna get used to lots of offense. And that's what we expect. That's what the fans wanna see. And that's what we've seen here in just the early going. The Outlaws have a little defense to go with it. The Marshals have yet to stop the Outlaws. We'll see how that pans out as the game goes along. Quarterback Johnson, when he got hurt at CSU Pueblo, he got with the Denver Broncos and rehabbed with the quarterback's coach for a long time. And the guy he was playing right alongside of was Paxton Lynch. So he's got some good pedigree. 
You had it's some a good experience in, a, in addition to playing over in Europe, you said. Czechoslovakia, and as far as I know, no other player that in America playing football that I know of has played in Czechoslovakia. But he wanted to play that bad when they told him to go to go do it. He did. Here's some of the fans waving at the cameras that are making fun here at the Metro. Everyone, Gold Goldsmith Gallery kiss cam. Will he kiss her? Yes, he will. A good for them. But it was the son that had to prompt the dad there. <laughs> There's another couple enjoying the action here. Jay Cohn along with Rick Holmes. We're inside the Rimrock Auto Arena as the Billings Outlaws back in the Magic City for the first time in a month after a long three game road trip that took them all across the Midwest from Omaha to Wyoming. You know, one of the things while I was to looking, at, looking at players and watching film where they were from, so many of them have come from Division Three, NC2A Division Three. All right, Strother with the kick. It's going to be fielded by the Outlaws up around the boards. Winston Green, nice head. Call that in. Had he stopped by Devonte Tinsley, a defensive back for the for the Marshals. So you see they kick off right from the their own end zone, both teams. And in that case, Strother floated it down to about the six yard line where Tinsley was able to haul it in and return it right up to into Rapid City uh, side of the field there on the 23 yard line. Moving in as Charles McCollum, the quarterback, sets his receivers in motion. First and ten, looks over the middle, and it's complete to Gary Brown. I'm sorry. Yep, that is Gary Brown. Right in the middle of uh, John DePalma and, and Mike Gant. Mike Gant's an interesting story, too. From Fairley Dickinson, and I'd never heard of it. I looked it up. It's in Teaneck, New Jersey. I've heard of it. I did not know that's where it was. Thanks for the research. Rick. <laughs> Across the middle, McCollum finds his man. I told you that uh, that young man from Dickinson State would make his presence felt. He just put a stick on the receiver. Chad Nolan was the receiver for the Outlaws. And Antoine Smith made the picture perfect stop. So a good kickoff return and two plays. The Outlaws are right down inside the 10 yard line of Rapid City. Stoppage of time. Looks like a timeout. As the also, if you're watching and you're wondering what the coaches are doing on the field, well, the, the teams can have a coach on the field. They're like uh, allowed to have somebody right in the huddle, but then they have to get out of the huddle, of course, once the play goes. But if you've not seen the CIF action and you're wondering what are the coaches doing on the field? That's the story. Right. Your hey, impression so far, Rick. Um, I, I like what, uh, based on what I watched on film for Rapid City, they're executing much better. They've got good athletes. There's no doubt about it. They've got one of the best defensive linemen uh, in the league in Tony Thompson, and he's got to be the pride of South Dakota because he played at South Dakota State for the Jackrabbits. Of course, the Bobcats and them tangled right to get into the national championship game. So we know a lot about South Dakota. But he's Stiegel, he was played under John Stiegelmeyer and plays well. Absolutely. Been the long time coach there. All right, McCollum surveys the field. Looking to find someone open. Overthrow was intended uh, receiver Laughing House. It might have been uh, McCollum just knowing no one was open. We have a flag down. Remember I was talking about LeBaron Mallory looking for another shot? Right. LeBaron Mallory was in coverage. <laughs> Call know? was against Rapid City. Well, I so can't, now, can't see the field from here. I'm only looking at the screen, so I'm not sure. 
Outlaws set up shop now, right? Almost at the three yard line. Evans is the running back alongside McCollum. He's got both touchdowns so far in the game. There go the receivers. McCollum with that fake pitch this time. And he throws across the middle. It's caught for the score. And that's Lappinghouse. Tyrone Lappinghouse, one of the favorite receivers coming in. And he shows why. That's his ninth touchdown reception on the year. And, and that uh, leads the league. And De Palma and Tarek uh, Pusey, Pusey uh, just couldn't get there. Nice route. And good decision making by Charles McCollum who comes in uh, rated second in the league in the quarterback rating department completing almost 67% of his passes. And a nice job by Laffinghouse to get in the end zone just sit right down he could tell he was open. And McCollum found him right away. Just a little turn in, settle in the soft spot. High snap. Daly misses this one off to the right. So 0 for 3 in the point after department. But the Outlaws lead the visiting Rapid City Marshals 18 to 7 with 56 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. You know, Dylan Donahue is the snapper, but I'm not going to tell him to improve because I would have, <laughs> I'm afraid of what he would do to me. <laughs> A few kinks to work out in the uh, <laughs> extra point kicking game. But so far, the Outlaws offense has been right on point. Theo Johnson has to be happy about that. You know, I'm talking about the college divisions. I think most people would think Division One college football in the NC2A would have a uh, majority of the teams. But the surprising, uh, the surprising thing to me, it wasn't D2. It was D3. There's 450 NC2, and they don't offer scholarships. You can't get athletic scholarships there. You can get assistance, but you can't get athletic scholarships. And most of those are, you, you know, they, 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 a lot of the schools in Division Three can set their own standards. Daly with the kickoff. It bounces and is picked up right away by Jenny, uh, Jason Tillery, and he Ooh. gets it out. To the midfield stripe at 25 yard line. So Tillery heads up, just said, I'll take that. That is one big man. Kevin Chisholm, the wide receiver, blocking for him. Kevin from Lindenwood University. So the clock running here, less than a minute to go here in the first quarter. And the Rapid City Marshals trailing 18 to 7. This is their third possession of the first quarter. Let's see how they, they fare this time around. Quarterback Jake Johnson fakes the pitch. We'll throw it across the middle. And uh, there's big number zero again. Rick, you said he's, it took like three or four outlaws to get him to the turf. I was telling the truth, wasn't I? Yes. Yeah, he is a load. And he's got good hands. He catches everything. He's also listed as a quarterback. Quarterback and a wide receiver. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> he'd be he'd be tough in the Wildcat. Although one of the Montana Grizzlies had just signed a free agent contract, Dylan Cook, when he played right. for Harry Gray at Butte High, he was a quarterback. I remember him. Big kid. I remember the, the Cook family in Butte. Mm -hmm. So that's the end of the first quarter as they'll switch the ball, but the Outlaws will be on defense. Rapid City with the ball at the 15-yard line. 18 to seven, your first quarter score, as the Outlaws had a very enjoyable first period back in the building that they call home. And you fans, you're gonna need to come out and see this team in action yourself. It's one thing to watch it on the stream. It's good, we enjoy doing it for you, but it's got a whole different feel here in person. You can watch Canadian football and watch the motion and there's 11 players of fields wider and longer. This is shorter and narrower and with all the motion it's just a fast entertaining game. Well we mentioned in the uh, pregame comments about some of the, the two best uh, some of the two best defensive players for the outlaws missing the game because of uh, the wedding of Denarius Antoine and Devontae Brown. Devontae is the best man. 
So they're down in Texas this weekend when it just means an opportunity for other players to step up and show what they're made of. And Jeff Luck got to move to linebacker and first defensive possession, picked off a errant pass and was able to set his team up in good shape for their second touchdown. Eddie Hamilton moves into his spot. He moves into middle linebacker. Uh, Billy Edens, who's got four interceptions for the year, only needs a couple more to lead the league. You know, and he sat out a game or two. So, and I, so I don't think the defense has, has lost a step. But of course, in any level of uh, ball in any sport, really, somebody is gone. Somebody steps up, next man up mentality. And we'll get a chance to see really how, how deep. Of course, with only a 25 man roster, each team's depth can only be so deep, but you need to have quality players up and down that roster. Yeah, and I think you can only have 21 active yes. for a game. All right. So Johnson puts the Marshall's offense Wide in play. Wide open. And again. Ooh. 